Okay, I'm going to go ahead and tie a uh, snow cone tiger midge with a bit of a hot spot. The hot spot in this case is a bit of uh, fluorescent orange paint and it's a bit of a custom paint job. Uh, this is a nice tiger midge that uh, does work nicely at times when those trout are keen on the tiger midge but I've definitely seen too many with the standard silver or brass bead so when someone says snow cone what they're referring to is this pearl white bead in this case I have a uh, 564 pearl white bead and I have a uh, TMCO 2499 SPBL hook you can kind of see it has that nice big wide gape and this is a hook that I prefer when uh, tying up my uh, still water patterns especially when I'm doing that little bit of midging so pretty easy pattern to tie all you're going to go ahead and do is attach your thread like most of my patterns I like to use good abroads 10 knot thread a uh, bit different on the thing I like to do on my flies though is rather than just have thread bodies I like to use some black angel hair because I definitely think it gives a nice shine to that fly and shiny midges are a good thing I'll go ahead and get that in there looking pretty good and I like to go ahead now and just add in my extra small red wire. We are tying a tiger mid, so red wire is always good there. So get that red wire, get it on the shank close to you. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go ahead now and just advance the thread down the hook shank. To about the midpoint there in the bend of the hook. Not too big, not too small of a midge. About there is perfect. And then go back, open wind your thread back, take it back to the bead, and then just create a bit of a taper in your midge. Not too much, just a little bit there to give that nice profile of a midge. So I think I have that. I think it's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead now and just gather up that pearl fly, I mean the uh, angel hair. You can just go ahead and cut that nuisance hair off there. I'll go ahead and trim that back off later. So just go ahead now and just wind this material up the hook, shank, you can kind of bind them together like that, by tapping with the scissors there all I'm doing I'm just kind of gathering them together, and this is not exactly doing what I want it to do so Try it again. No harm in trying again. It's always fly time. So, gather them up. Like that. There we go. Now I got it. I knew it would work on the second time. Okay. So now we're just going to kind of come up the thread. Come up the thread. <laughs> Come up the shank of the hook with my materials to the be there. And you can kind of guess see that I've created a nice black sheen midge. Do a little trim job here a little bit. Got a little air in here. 
no big deal. It's not going to cause a problem. Okay. So now the wire comes in and I'm going to show a little trick. Now you can just simply take that wire and wrap it up if you wanted to. But uh, a little trick that I, I like to do, and this is something that uh, I, I learned from a book by Charlie Craven, is you just go ahead and just... I'm going to do one wrap on the bottom. This is going to create that little red butt, which a lot of these midges have. So I do one wrap around the, the base there. So I have this nice red butt. And then now, instead of wrapping it this way, spiral wrapping it basically up the shank of the hook, I'm going to go ahead and just do one turn there straight up. So it's straight in the air. Go ahead and catch it with my finger. Come back around and catch it again. And what I'm doing is I'm creating perfect vertical segmentations. Now, do the trout care? Probably not, but I think it does look nicer and it keeps my midges consistent so they all look pretty much the same, which I think is good when tying. So, I have my Material there at the eye at the beat of the of the of the fly. Now a little trick here I like to do is I like to take my bobbin, uh, pull it tight towards the bead, and basically support the bead. And I'm gonna do a little bit of that fatigue test back and forth with that wire, so I can go ahead and break it off, just like that. Um, by doing that, uh, you avoid using your uh, your scissor tips to um, break the material off and by using your scissor tips you basically wear them out. So this is a little trick that basically helps out with that. So it's the whip finish now which I have done right there. Okay. So what you have is you have a nice tiger midge snow cone tiger midge. It looks pretty good. All I would do to finish that fly now is I'd just add a little bit of a zappy gap on a botkin and I would shine it all up and it'd be good to go. But I'm going to go ahead, I've already done that on this other midge here. I'm going to go ahead and put that in the vise. I'm going to show you guys how to do that hot spot. So there it is. It's a nice shiny midge. It has that uh, snow cone bead. And like I said, you can fish this all day and catch a lot of fish. But I think this little trick here works sometimes really nicely. And you just add a bit of this uh, tulip slick fabric paint. And the color that I like to use uses fluorescent orange. Shake it up a little bit. I'm going to do a little bit of a thing here and get the vise and turn a little bit. The trick is you want to go ahead and just add that hot spot right there on the top of that bead. I'll turn the fly over a little bit and do the other side. Just like that. So now I have my hot spot on both sides. Basically my little pad, little wing buds, gill pads, and go ahead and just spread it out a little bit. You don't want those things to be bulging out a little bit. So get your bodkin and just move that a little bit. And there you go. And uh, that is a uh, snow cone midge with that, uh, that hot spot on it. And it uh, works out really well. So um, the uh, fabric paint uh, does stay on that, uh, that bead quite well. And uh, I've used it uh, quite often. And uh, my last trip, um, this pattern in the afternoon when those uh, fish were going after the tiger midge to work a bit better. Thanks a lot. Happy tying to you.